Hi, I'm Sarah Popejoy and I'm going to teach you today about writing songs. Uh, this is kind of a songwriting 101 class. Um, you know, no, there's, we're not going to go too in depth into other ideas of, on when it comes to songwriting. This is basically a video for people who've never written a song before, who would like to write their own song, or you know, maybe just a review for other songwriters. So, the very first first things first. Uh, when you write your own song, um, there are two major elements of writing a song. The first are the lyrics, and the second is the music. Now, for beginning writers, I would suggest trying to start writing lyrics first. Um, just because a lot of times, if you've never written a song before, if you're not a musician, then writing the lyrics, you can kind of get your melody off of that or you know until you get to where you're writing songs all the time then you'll be able to do it both at the same time okay so for lyric writing in songs the very the main thing you need to know about lyric writing is there are structures within songs just like anything else you know when you were in school and they gave you a structure for writing a report there's a structure for writing songs. Okay. I'm warning you now that spelling's not my best uh, forte, so there may be many misspelled words along the way here. Um, okay, so in structure, there are several different types of structure for um, writing songs. The very, well, the most common structure that you see, there's two most common structures that you see when you listen to the radio. That is, Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or what we like to say a lot of times because it's abbreviated is the AB, AB structure. Now the reason why we call it that has nothing to do with chords or anything like that. A just stands for verse, B stands for chorus, so verse, chorus, verse, chorus is what that means. Um, a lot of songwriters also, um, a very uh, structure that's used a lot is a lot of times they put on what's called a bridge, and we usually use a C, is very common to use for the bridge, so, and then chorus. So the second most common is verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, and this, and I would say that the second most common is probably verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus. If you, uh, the difference between a verse and a chorus, chorus is, uh, I think most people do know this though, is a chorus is just basically the repeated element within a song. Um, it's usually around four lines, but you know, honestly, there's no norm for it. It can be two lines, it can be four lines, it can be eight lines, it doesn't matter. All that matters is, now, like I said, this is basic songwriting. Um, basically, you just, repeat their the chorus are repeated words so it's the repeated phrase you know the repeated uh, lines within a song and normally your verses are not repeated in basic songwriting um, verses are also verses always rhyme so in other words um, if you've got now, you could have more than one type of verse, but we won't, like I said, we're not going to get into, we're not talking about complicated songwriting, we're just talking about basic songwriting. So in basic songwriting, your verses, they will, the melody will be the same. I'm sorry, not rhyme. Your verse, your melody will be the same. It'll be repeated. So whatever melody is in verse 1, Verse 2 will have the same melody, but your words change. Okay? So that's um, a few of the basics in lyric writing. So let's say that I were to write a song, and I had um, my phrases here, because this is my verse, and then my chorus. Your verse or your lines right here, 
and then your chorus is a repeated set of phrases, okay? Um, okay. Now for, now we're going to move on. I think you've got that. <laughs> now we're going to move on to um, the uh, melody within a song, okay? Your melody within a song is basically the, uh, your melody is what the vocalist does, okay? There may be people who do what's called harmonizing with it, but your melody is your basic um, singing within the song, okay? The core, all melodies are based off the chords that are within um, are within a song. So if you're playing guitar or you're playing um, piano, basically to write a song, the music is made up of chords, chords, and what your vocalist does is the melody. Okay? Your melody is always based off of the chords. So if you've already gotten your lyrics written out and you put behind chords behind the song, and we're, we're going to talk about chord structure here in a little bit, then your melody will basically pick notes out of the chords that are within the song. So it's very easy. Once you have uh, chords written down, it can easily direct your uh, melody. Now, Now, there are a lot of uh, different types of um, chord structures that you can do. We're going to talk about the most basic, and we're going to talk about um, major keys, because everything, every song has a key that they basically uh, rotate around. When, now there's, like I said, there's more complicated ways of doing all these things, and you know, little tricks that songwriters use, but just for uh, basic 101, we're going to start with just just one key. And most, and honestly, most songs that you hear on the radio are in one key, okay? Most pop songs, especially folk songs, and uh, country songs especially too, uh, you're just, you're going to hear it, and it's all going to be in one key. Now, what's a key? A key, if you've never written before, uh, hopefully you've done a little music, you've been played a little bit around on the guitar or uh, or the piano. A key is kind of like your map. It's your map for where your chords should stay in and kind of what notes they shouldn't hit. When you can kind of stay within those chords, then you know it's going to sound smoother until you really know what you're doing in writing the song. Um, Okay, so once you have your key, and there's all kinds of tools for this, there's uh, something you should probably look up called the circle of fifths, if you don't already know about it. And basically the circle of fifths tells you um, all the keys um, within the major, major keys. Okay, now hopefully I haven't thrown you off or confused you just yet. So we're going to start out with a very simple key. We're going to start with this key of C. 
okay? Because the key of C has no sharps and no flats, which means if you're playing on the piano, you don't hit any of the black keys, okay? So, key of C, and you could actually end up writing a song today if you uh, took some of these, uh, these simple, simple, uh, uh, basically, direction for starting a song. Okay, um, so the key of C is C, D, E, F, oops, G, A, B. Now, there's no sharps, no flats within the key of C. So, within a major key, you have one, four, and five. The reason why these are these right here are going to be your most important notes. I mean, most important chords that you kind of circle around, because most uh, popular music, folk music, is based around a one-four-five platform. Um, one is what we call. Now I don't remember. These all have their own names, but to me, the most important one to remember is one, because one is your what's called your tonic. And most songs um, for Music Writing 101, they start and end on the tonic, okay? So right here, if you're within the key of C and you're starting out a song, most likely you're going to start out that song playing the key of C. Okay, so right here. Your one, what's called your four and your five, would be C, F, and G. And those are all going to be major chords. So you're going to play a C major, an F major, and a G major. And if you kind of hang around those notes, uh, those are very, uh, those are going to be your most popular notes. They're going to be your uh, happiest sounding chords, um, your biggest sounding chords. Um, the rest, your everything in between, except for the last one, everything in between is going to be what we call a minor. Okay? These minor chords, they're called minor chords, okay? So basically, your key is made up of major chords and minor chords. Your minor chords are going to be kind of sadder sounding, um, and then B is diminished, and it's going to sound really dark. So I don't really, honestly, I don't usually use a lot of the sevens in my songs unless uh, there's other, you know, there's other types you can do too. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to stick with only major and minor chords, but those are your most basic chords within your uh, major structures. So, you know, you can always add there's sevens and nines and all kinds of things you can add on later. But for now, with just the basics, if you know C, F, and G, then you know, um, then you can start a song. And basically, just start, you know, look at other songs and look at, you know, my biggest, uh, I think the biggest thing you could do in studying songwriting, especially if you're new, is go out and um, or go online, find a few of songs that you really like, you know, whoever it may be, and get the chords for that song. Then find out what they're using. Are they using major chords or are they using minor chords? Okay, and find out how they're placing it and see how it sounds. That's a uh, that's a really good way. I used to uh, take songs and you know just kind of put you know what they were doing and it, and it kind of just shows you and you can grow from that but that is when you know and you understand chord structures and you understand um, you know a major key and you understand that uh, that most of pop music is based around the one four five which doesn't mean playing them in order, it just means, you know, 
switching and change, changing one, four, and five around, and you know, playing minors in between, then you can write pretty much almost anything. And uh, everything else that you learn on top of that, you're just growing, but that's your basic foundation for songwriting. And uh, I hope this helps, and I hope you start writing a ton of songs, and uh, put your comments below, and let me know how you're doing. And for more marketing information, visit uh, sarahpopejoy.com, Musicians Empowered. Have a wonderful day. Bye.